28 millimeters on a full frame camera is kind of weird. And while I didn't plan to end up with one, it's fitting really nicely into my kit. I shoot with an R6, and while I've had this Sigma 28mm f1.4 version for several months, I wanted to shoot the Milky Way early in the season before making this video. The combination of wide angle, fast aperture, and great corner image quality makes this a great candidate for Astro. I'm bringing a fresh perspective today because this is my first Sigma lens, and this video is going to be dense. In many ways, this video is going to best act as the very thesis of my channel. If you're new, I'm Dan, and I make contextual videos over time. Contextual meaning that I keep my reviews in the universe of the other gear that I actually use. And over time, in case my opinions change or strengthen. For this 28 millimeter lens, that contextual piece is so closely tied up in my recommendation that we have to make time in this video to chase some of those contextual strands, figure out why this lens works for me, and if it might work for you. Looking at my concrete use case, on the wide end, I've used an RF 14 millimeter and an RF 35 millimeter. The 35 mil is on the camera right now for this intro. The best lens for me, the right tool, is probably the RF 15 to 35 F 28 It's fast enough for my needs and covers a great range for what I like to shoot. I don't want to spend $2,400 right now though. And as I'll get into, I'm not too excited to send that money specifically to Canon right now. Instead, for now, I think I can get away with this faster prime because it's in the range and closer to the 35 end. For Astro in the past, I was mostly using the Samyang RF 14mm. This second pickup was specifically for dabbling in astrophotography and particularly Milky Way shots. The 35 is actually good for playing around with this, but the 14mm lets you keep the shutter open for a lot longer and edges of the frame are a lot cleaner, at least in terms of the quality of the stars. And it was a good pickup at the time because I wanted to practice wide landscape as well. I took some cool shots on my road trip with this lens too. It's relatively small and light, it's weather sealed. I just updated the firmware to work with the IBIS on the R6. There's a lot to like, but it's not a very versatile lens unless you love being stuck at 14 millimeters. These days, I think it's a little bit harder to recommend that lens now that Canon has done away with third-party RF but you still can get them used. With the 28 millimeter, you're getting a brighter maximum aperture, but keep in mind, you'll also need to shorten your shutter speeds to keep stars from moving. I find I much prefer how the Milky Way fills the frame on the 28 mil, and you can get great results untracked so long as you are in darker skies. While I have 24 on the 24 to 105, obviously, I haven't used a 24 prime, and that's generally a good focal length for Astro. Unfortunately, Canon just doesn't have great prime options at 24 right now, at least for Astro work. Instead, Canon is basically saying, look at all these EF options that we have, they adapt great. And in their defense, anything that I've tried to adapt, the 28 mil included, works really well. But personally, I'm trying to minimize how much money I put into Canon EF glass, given that it's now 2023. Sigma does have a fast 24 millimeter art, and I'm relying on a great comparison video that Camille Pakala made between that and the 28 to say that the 28 is the better choice. Nowadays, it's cheaper. It has better corner image quality. It's also weather sealed. So unless you really feel strongly about having that extra field of view on the 24 as compared to the 28, for all your other types of shooting, the 28 is the play between those two. If you're big into Astro, check out his channel. I'll link it below. But enough about the stars. The price on this lens floats around a little bit. I paid $699 USD at the end of last year, 2022. That price is actually what prompted the purchase for me. I knew I was going to be selling my RP. I knew I was going to be selling my 14. And I knew that eventually, probably, I'd be selling the 35 if I tried this out and it was a good fit. At $699, this dropped into the cheap enough to commit to a long-term try, can sell it if I need to price range, and I pulled the trigger. It's now looking like $799, and the 24 millimeter art is $849 if you're considering these two lenses together. At $799, I would still consider this incredibly fair for the image that you're gonna get, and the build quality that this lens has. If we take the build into consideration when we start to look at the other alternatives in this focal range for the RF mount 
you can get an idea of what I mean. So this is the box, if you're curious. Again, this is my first Sigma, so it's pleasantly surprising to get a soft case at this price point. And that's useful maybe if you're only taking one lens, you could potentially ditch the bigger ICU that you typically carry in your bag, keep the lens in this, and cut down on space. You get a rubberized hood and a locking mechanism, a weather sealing gasket, a 77 millimeter thread, which is my favorite, a focus switch, a focus window, and a very smooth focusing ring with feedback for the limits. Notably, no image stabilization switch, as there is none, and no control ring, because it's an EF mount. It's about the exact same size as the RF 24-105L, though heavier and longer with the EF RF adapter. Compared to the 35mm macro, there's a big difference. The 28 is twice as big, three times as heavy, and almost twice as much. The 35mm has image stabilization, a 1-2 to two macro, and only costs $499 USD. But it isn't weather sealed, and the Sigma 28mm is superior for Astro. Those last two points are very important for me as I continue to learn what I like to shoot most, and many times the 35 just feels a little too tight. The 35 is great though, and I still recommend it often. I shot a lot of products and freelance with this lens, and it's what many of the videos on this channel are filmed on. The RF 24 millimeter macro is 599 and is identical to the 35 mil in a lot of ways. If you don't need the weather sealing or astro performance, that's probably a better way to start than a 28 mil, particularly if you have an APS-C sensor on the R7 or R10, or the form factor of an RP or R8. To Canon's credit, I think the more affordable primes are a great fit for their more affordable bodies, and on that end of the spectrum, I think they're offering a lot. We're seeing Canon offer better autofocus, more video features, and much higher still shooting speeds on that end. On the more pro side, the primes are miserably expensive, and particularly for the wides, they're just missing, even after all these years. The RF 15-35 zoom gets you the weather ceiling, the astro performance, and the L quality image that the more affordable options are missing, particularly in the corners. The 24-70 is probably great for astro, but I've built my kit around the 24-105. If I switched, the 24-70 would probably be my most heavily used lens, but I like having the F4 for the footprint. I like faster than an F2.8 for some uses which is what the 28 gives me. And I do like that 70 to 105 millimeter portion for travel. Technically, you can also get a fast native first party 28 millimeter, but it's locked up in a massive heavy $3,100 28 to 70 zoom. So while my kit is generally working for all my use cases and I'm pretty happy with what I now have for what I shoot, I'm really frustrated with Canon's methodology here and particularly for what they're offering in the upper middle and beyond. While I would generally rather shoot native RF than put my money there, this Sigma slots very nicely into the hole that I'm missing at the right price point, so long as you can live with the adapted size and weight. And shooting mainly photos myself, I think this pairs very nicely with an IBIS body, as you are not going to have the IS in the lens itself. Honestly, I feel like it takes me a really long time to figure out what prime focal lengths I like enough to want to throw Canon L Prime money into. And I still don't know. That's why I've split the difference and gone with the 28 in this instance. In turn, I find it really difficult to recommend Prime focal lengths to others without knowing exactly what you shoot. As a walk around lens, or even one that I'll go on to use as my primary A-roll shot, 28 feels very different than 35. And I like it better overall. Typically, I might be used to the full field of view of the 24mm on the 24-105L when I'm walking around on a trip, but that's f4, great for landscape, and in Ottawa, I really enjoyed the compromise of being mostly that wide while also having a lot more available light, and that's what the 28 was. At f1.4, the look of the subject background separation is nicer too. Given the longer focal length, and because it's still an f1.8, the subject background separation with 35 is probably the nicest, but it's always just a little bit too tight for travel, landscape, or street. 28 is also quite different than 24. 24 mil is what I'd rather not shoot things like this A-roll shot at. It's a bit wide for my liking, and the 28 is still wide enough that you can shoot in a pretty tight space on a full frame camera like the R6. When I think about my entire kit, and about what combos of two complementary lenses 
I could pack to plan for the most coverage, I prefer the Fast 28 over a Fast 24. Also, I already have a handy 48 megapixel, 24 millimeter prime in my pocket that shoots raw and is becoming increasingly usable. I don't love needing to get physically so close to people when using this lens. That's where I prefer 50, 85, 105 and beyond. But no matter what you choose on that 14 to 35 continuum, taking portraits is still going to involve getting pretty close to somebody in a way that's very different than the shooting experience when you've got an 85, 100, or 135 on. All of that to say, 28 millimeters might be a little bit of a gamble if you're too early in your journey to know how you feel about 24 or 35 primes. Or if you haven't settled into a niche yet and just wanna keep your options open, then skip the prime, zoom is probably the way to go. I'm keeping the 35 for a bit longer, so please let me know if you wanna see a whole video um, comparing the field of view with this 28 and this 35, or if you wanna do some pixel peeping on the quality for things like landscape. Essentially though, if you choose the 28, you're not gonna get nearly as close with this lens because you're giving up the one to two macro feature. The 28 millimeter still does focus as close as a few inches, but the overall look at minimum focus for these two lenses respectively is drastically different. What you lose in close focusing ability with the 28, you're gonna gain an auto focus performance over the 35. Jumping near to far is a lot quieter on the 28 than the 35, and it's considerably faster. Not quite as snappy as something like the 24 to 105, but very close. And hardly any autofocus issues with this lens to report. I've had a few rare examples in the time that I've had it where picking out a tricky subject was tough, but otherwise, it's been like all the modern lenses that I've tested on mirrorless cameras with good eye autofocus. An excellent hit rate, something that I can trust, and frankly spoiled compared to where we were a couple years ago. My one usual caveat, I don't shoot weddings. If you're a full-time wedding photographer, this is probably fine. If you get paranoid or want the best of the best autofocus performance, the RF 15 to 35 probably performs a little bit better than this lens. And I should hope, given the price, and that f2.8, the widest maximum aperture on that lens, is more forgiving just in general than, say, 1.4. Whether or not you make your money shooting events might determine whether you need to shell out to get that incremental autofocus improvement and zoom versatility just in case.